So welcome everybody to another episode of the Roommasters Clubcast. Here is what you have to look forward to in tonight's episode. Everyone, Everyone is fat shamming. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually pretty good, bud. That is good. And if okay, that's it. That's all I got. Yeah, but the Everyone couch Atkins? is white, so it's like making my shirt look whiter. <laughs> Was your idea Atkins? Because I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Like Ryan on pot roast night. It's gone on too far. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Camera adds 10 pounds. 15 you minutes. covered up the couch. Yeah. Why'd, why'd you, you eat five cameras? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's not my joke. That's not my joke. I'm sorry. He just, he started it. And he finished it. But I'm not talking about a buffet. <laughs> I apologize, Ryan. I thought we were going to keep the resin going. That's all. Just, uh, That's what I was doing. Yeah. Just ride on in to the raspberries. The raspberries, huh? You could use a raspberry too, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> I should have been a lawyer. <laughs> Dragon Law, actually. It's called Dragon Law. Dragon, Dragon Law Z. Oh my God. <laughs> Nailed it. That First was try. <laughs> Welcome, Craft Beer. My name is Donnie. This is the official Brewmasters Club podcast, Craft Beers and Geek News, where we talk about national stories, local flavors, and our favorite geeky nuggets of pop culture. Who could talk about these topics beside the three of us? Mr. Broodway813, how are you this evening? Feeling comfy. You're feeling comfy. You sound good. That's great, my friend. Also, Mr. Lausman, or what I like to refer to as the Ginger Man, how are you? Uh, it's pronounced gingerman, but yes, <laughs> I'm feeling great. <laughs> That's good, buddy. That's good. So we got we got a busy show. We got a packed show. We've got a lot to talk about. At least I do. I did some traveling since we last talked, and um, there's been a bit of news that came out. I know, Ryan, you've got some stuff to talk about, so let's get right into it. But first, the segment that we always start off with, what are you going to drink? What are you drinking? Mr. Lausman, you said you have a tasty lick this evening? Uh, actually, no. From the sounds of everything else, I have the least interesting one. But um, I just have Two Hearted from Bells, which is always it's yummy. It's a tasty lick. It was the number one beer of what? What did we say? 2017? We reported on that? Uh, yeah. No, it's it's just not very earth shattering. It's it's very yummy uh, from Comstock, Michigan. But um, it's an APA, which I always forget about because it tastes so much like an IPA. But Bells like Two Hearted is Kalamazoo. I'm yeah. reading Comstock, Michigan on the label. Comstock. Okay, maybe it is. I thought Bell's Too Hearted was... Oh, no, no, no. I'm getting confused with um, Oberon. I'm Oberon. sorry. Very yeah. different. Very different. Very different. Absolutely. Yeah, still very yummy. No, Anybody I'm who's sorry. new to APAs, I'd give it a swing. Give it a swing? Yep. Too Hearted. A now, is that... Swing and a miss, or is that a swing and a foul ball? There's there's many different forms of swigs there, buddy. How about a swig? Give it a swig. Just give, give, it, a swig. give it a swig. <laughs> Got it. But yeah. I, I'm trying to remember Too Hearted. Now, does it drink... It's an APA, you said, so it's not an mm-hmm. IPA. Is it more tart? Is it more... What makes it what makes it APA besides just naming it an American pale ale opposed to not Indian pale ale? Honestly, to me, it tastes like an IPA. So uh, the label, I would have to say, makes it an APA. <laughs> that's <laughs> about it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it would, I, I, that's why every time I see it in the store, I'm always like, oh, shoot, really? It's an APA? I'm like, huh, usually APAs are a little darker, a little like more like a brown ale for me. So I'm kind of meh, but always love Bells. Always love the Two Hearted. Um, yeah, I, I do just don't like bells. the price of a 12 pack on that. So. What was it? At the gas station, I only got a six pack, but it was uh, for the 12 pack, it was $22. Woo! Oh, man. Yeah. That I'm like, crazy. wow. It's a little outrageous. For a 12 pack? Yeah. I mean, it's deep. Two sixes I mean, you... and a six is about 11. Yeah, that's, that's rough. Ugh. All right. Well, interesting. Mr. Raga, Breed Boy 813, what do you got tonight? I am sharing this evening a beer that our buddy Eddie gave me. Uh, oh man, Big Crazy Eddie. Big Crazy Eddie, yep. That's that's what I was told his name was when I first met him, and he was at Florida Craft Beer Day last week. If, I, if I'm if i not mistaken, he's head of the Pasco County Brewers Guild. Is that what I remember hearing? Uh, I'm so not anyway, sure. Yeah, or correct. Part, is... part, part, part yeah, he's of part. It, he's part. If not one of the top guys uh, in, in that organization so they were all doing a bottle share and he brought this over to me and this is his spruce beer and i forget if i forget what style it is i think it's a lager i could be wrong um but it is simply phenomenal it tastes like christmas 
if if you can imagine it certainly does if you can yeah. imagine like cutting the end off of your christmas tree and drinking it that's what it tastes like not drinking the water after it's been you know keeping your christmas tree alive all december uh this is in just, there buddy you're you're, know. you're tasting the problem is i have a fake tree <laughs> <laughs> you're tasting what you smell when you cut the bottom of a christmas tree off and that, i i absolutely love it it just brings back so many memories for me of not actually eating christmas trees but just smelling the christmas trees when i cut the bottoms off uh and it's it's a phenomenal beer so he gave me a six pack of this a three pack of his uh irish red and a three pack of his porter as well as a uh, 32 ounce growler of his mango wheat, which tastes just like iced tea. And I gave that to my dad. So shout out to Eddie. Great beer, yeah, man. man. Yeah. And I look forward to brewing with you soon. And trust me, if we got any of that wrong, there's several members of the Pasco mm-hmm. Brewers Guild that listen to the show. So they will definitely correct oh. us. And actually, Angela, it's a lady um, who is the, uh, the 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 head uh, the head of the, the club. So good on them. And yes, for Florida Craft Beer Day, fantastic. Um, fantastic seeing them out a lot was going on that day so there was a lot going on it sounded really good though it was busy in there it was loud and it was it was it was you know incredible it was electric it was really a lot of fun yes Mm -hmm. and this beer just added to my enjoyment i I do i do think that was the standout because we sampled a whole bunch including the cascale that was aged and and i know ryan you had some comments about it and i told you that was my new year's um resolution for 2019 was to try more casks more more about that in a second but um um, yeah, I think that his little sample of the spruce beer that we had, learning that he actually cut off spruce tips and brewed it with the spruce tips mm. in there, and not to mention that we were on the tail end of Christmas, right? So you have to imagine that beer was just perfect, mm. right? Two months after Christmas, just perfect. Like, you know that was that was at its peak, its prime right there. Um, not that you couldn't age it or something. I'm sure that would do well too, but man, it was good. Uh, that definitely was a takeaway. Somebody told me once, if you're going to brew a beer, brew a beer that is worth traveling for or at least having hundreds of people wait in line if that's a great yeah it's a great thing that's a that's a good saying about brewing beer (laughs) this beer this beer may not be for everyone like you might have it and be like oh this is great but it's not one of those you know uh sriracha spears for donny uh last man uh, I'll come back to you on your favorite. I'm not sure if I know that anymore. Um, but this is a beer that I would wait in line for if they only released it once a year. I would have to buy three or four bottles of it and just say I'm going all in. Yeah, it was um, it was very good. And like I said, it was it was a fleeting moment, but it was certainly worthwhile. And yeah. it was definitely why we do Florida Craft Beer Day. Absolutely. It was great to be surrounded by a community of people that all love craft beer and sharing their beer at the same time. So he's got a wicked cool setup too he's got all of his uh, water coming off of his electric uh water heater which is cool so the the Whoa. water temperature comes out already at 145 155 degrees oh, Jesus. which which is actually more propane efficient so if you're still a home brewer and you're just brewing on you know propane and, and, and natural gas and all that stuff uh then it oh, you know, wait, coming up i'm confused Oh. Don't you use d- distilled water, though? Like, I use distilled water in mine. Do you just use Eddie's bath water? Well, no. So, true story. It's pre-bath water. When I first started off home brewing, <laughs> I would only use Publix uh, distilled water or purified yeah. water, right? Reverse osmosis, all that stuff. And I'd buy yeah. eight, eight to ten gallons every single time. Well, then um, my buddy over at Better Brew said, hey, why don't you just get uh, an RV hose or RV filter and a drinking hose? Because there's different hoses. You don't want to get like your regular lawn garden hose and stuff like that. You want to get a drinking hose. You want to connect it to an RV filter and then connect that to your water line. And what that does is it filters out all the, the uh, oh, okay. impurities, so most of them. And then that's what I've been using. And you can't tell the difference no, in my no. beers at all. So you can, use, you can use a Brita filter essentially. I mean, yeah, if you want to wait for that shit to soak through. <laughs> and, yeah. I need eight, I need eight <laughs> gallons. You it better start good. prepping on Monday for a Saturday brew for that. Three liters at a time. It takes 45 or minutes you, to you at least have to. Yeah, you at least have to remember to fill it up every night. Exactly. Well, <laughs> it, it, it keeps was, it nice and cold. <laughs> it does. It, <laughs> uh, I mean, maybe Donnie, you could use it for uh, your Pico brew. For my system. little baby brews? Yeah. yeah. But that's a, I, well, I that's a good idea. At, um, at, at 610 a few, a few weeks back, and Chris, I was telling him that story. He's like, well, what are you going to do if you ever open up a brewery? You're just going to buy all the Publix water you can find? And I said, well, no. He's like, man, go for it. Like in his Chris kind of tone, you know? Yeah. It's like, yeah. man, you just got to brew with the water that's there. And I'm like, all okay. right. <laughs> so I was like, cool. And then, like I said, Crazy Eddie, he's got it hooked up to his electric water heater. So it already comes out between 145, 155. It's pure.
pure enough, you know, yeah. out there in Land of Lakes, and because uh, he's right off 54. So um, we, you know, he showed me that it already comes out 145. So he's literally probably only spending. 15 10 to 15 minutes getting it to to the to the right temperature not even that maybe just like barely, eight just minutes barely roasting it just barely roasting, roasting it the water yeah. barely roasting the wow. water and that saves on propane costs so if you're a home brewer and you have an electric water heater hook it up do a do a filter if you want to but you shouldn't have to at that point so, so does he i wonder if does he use a water softener as well just being in land of lakes i well, don't have one. a lot of salt yeah well that's what i'm saying i don't have one in my house and i it it is it wreaks havoc on your appliances and shit but it would does. it would it do it, it would probably wouldn't you wouldn't be able to make beer. No, with you water. would not. No, no. You, you'd be making salt, salt water. water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, side question. Why couldn't you just install a the world's smallest electric tankless water heater? That's, that's what he's what talking about. Not, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's what he's saying. And he just kept saying electric water heater. And I'm like, it's well, tankless. Yeah, it's I've tankless. never seen a coal powered one. Sorry. My, my, my mistake. Yes. Hey, well, back in 19 Tickety, we did use coal. <laughs> I, well, I wasn't going to say you know anything bad about his method, but. Um, tankless water heater is what I was meaning yeah. to say. Yes. Thank yeah, you for okay. the correction, last man. Um, no, it's all good, man. So, yeah, brew with the water I you got. Pro- I have a propane water heater that keeps my water just as hot as I needed to. I wonder if you could still use that. Just, just tap into it somehow. Yeah, I bet but you could. Wait, does your propane come through pipes? You have to like fill it I have, up. I have, I have gas. My house is gas, oh, so I could just oh. run that all day, which actually is comparable. Not if you're probably doing a Man. lot of beer, but it's comparable to you know to whatever it would cost. But yeah, that's neither here nor there. What were you saying? Gas houses scare me. Yeah, they, they scare me. I was gonna say it's good to know Donnie has gas. Nope. Oh, wait, it's city gas, my man. City gas. City gas, dude. In the country or in the city, it's it's pretty shitty. I'm gonna, oh, I, I'm gonna make a beer. <laughs> yes, and that's gonna be the tagline. It's gonna be called City Gas. And it was it what was it last man in the country or the city? It's all shitty. Is that what he said? And yeah, I think something along those lines. Okay. Well, well we'll I'm back to the tape. All I'm saying is, if you have a stove that you cook on and it's it's a gas stove, it's different. It tastes a lot different it tastes better um it makes better food i think than it, than an electric but you've got to really be a uh, a kind of seal to, to to understand that because i don't really care and i have electric stove so i just know it can be better awesome so I'll always sleep with the window open just in case oh my god no you don't have to do that I've seen too many horror stories man just in case what spider-man needs to pay no, you a visit you, you get a leak and you're, <laughs> you're you're gonna die in your sleep Wow. Carbon um, monoxide. Uh, and we're not going on this rabbit hole. No, yeah. no, no, no. Well, you right. got off on a tangent. You wanted the show to be more flexible, Donnie. That's true. That's true. It is. It, 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 I did. So that's great. I am going to just say that I was traveling and I have tried a couple of beers. I want to highlight. Let me highlight a couple and then I'll show you the one that I'm actually, or talk about the one I'm actually drinking. So I'm going to do like a three for here, but they'll be quick. Okay. So part, part of my New Year's resolution again was to try more cask conditioned ales. And the one that I tried in New York City. New York City. City. <laughs> yep, that's that's <laughs> Lawson's joke. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Oh, I just, it's not his joke again. I it's not his the joke. Moment. <laughs> He's stealing all his own jokes, so don't don't take oh, it. It's fine. It's take it from him. I stole it from a chili commercial. I hardly consider that stealing. It's fair trade at this point. I thought it was from a movie, to be honest with you. I mean, it was the big beans commercial chili. where they're all ripping ass yeah. around the fire. And he's, New York City. No, New York that. City. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Oh, it was the beans commercial. And it was it was salsa. It was salsa that he made. That was made in Rotel. Yeah. It was like Rotel salsa. And they were comparing it to whatever the El Paso is. And they're like, what is that made in New York City? <laughs> the farting scene was from Blazing Saddles. That's yes. totally separate. Oh, you got a couple of those mixed up. You're meshing them together. But uh, but yes. Uh, Continue now, on. Uh, yeah, please, please. This is not what I came to talk about. I went to a place called um, the Ginger Man, and I only went there. It was I stayed in Ginger Midtown. Man. Sorry, I was there. Yeah, I was there with the wife for work. Hold on. She's still out of town, so I'm babysitting all the animals, which means there's a lot of noise in the background. All right. So she was, well, Jenny was there on business. And um, so I flew up for the weekend just to to go hang out with her. And while she was there and I was waiting for my flight, which was delayed, I realized that I had about three hours of time. So I just went on an adventure through Midtown, New York, and made it down to the Chrysler Building and Union Station and uh, made it to, uh, took a bunch of pictures and uh, made it all the way to the Ginger Man. I I pulled up my phone and I sit in the hotel in the central Midtown area. um, And I, I just, I typed in breweries. And what came up was, was one called the Ginger Man. Now, the Ginger Man is not exactly a brewery. It's a small pub um, that is known for its craft beer. And when you walk in there, it's got sayings painted on the walls and um, some amazing things in the bar itself. And the one that really stood out to me, I'm going to try and remember it because I, I will probably have to take a couple takes at this, but it was... 
if you don't have money, something like this, okay, something like this. If you don't have money, you know, your focus is food. If you do have money, you know, your priority shifts to sex. If you have both, the priority becomes, oh, I forgot that the tagline yeah, was the end What do you best. do with the food? Yeah, yeah, scenario. hold on. Hold on, I'm going to find it. And I hope you don't do anything weird with the third thing on that list. I... <laughs> Something to do with beer. I have an inkling. Very good. It was like, you know, at the end of the day, if you have both and, you know, all you're looking for is a drink or a good beer with friends. It was something really interesting. And it was it was a really good place. But it was full of things from like Charles Dickens and a um, uh, bunch of famous, you know, drinkers and poets and authors and Ernest Hemingway types and all sorts of stuff. So anyways, um that was the ginger man. What they had was a specialty beer that they only get. They had this menu changes every single day. So the beers they get today are not necessarily the beers they're going to have tomorrow. Kegs mm. float and that kind of stuff. I, I asked the bartender, I said, what is the beer that I've got to have? And she said, you've got to try this cask condition ale. It's called um, Harveyston Old Engine Oil Engineers Reserve from Alva, Scotland. And apparently uh, this brewery is not popular in Scotland. But when you're uh, overseas, when it comes overseas and you get it at bars and pubs, people love it. So... I've never had it overseas. I never had it here before, but because the story, um, I had to try it, and because my new New Year's resolution again, I had to try it. So it's um, it's a heavily uh, chocolate aroma, loads of roasted mar- uh, malt, <laughs> dark fruit kind of flavor to it. It's incredibly thick, so it's super super thick, like engine oil specifically. Um, but it doesn't have that bourbony scotchy flavor. It really just tastes, and it's not even chocolatey. It's got the right balance, which I've never had before in a cask ale between that bourbon barrel kind of flavor and that chocolate roastedness so imagine like a melted hershey's bar but instead of being so sweet it's it's a little bit more smoky and roasty and it has just a tinge just a a hint of flavor of that of that bourbon that really heavy boozy flavor which i don't normally like in cascales so it was nice that it was light but it wasn't overpowered by the smoke or by the, by the chocolate then the finish was like this smooth vanilla chocolate kind of um hybrid that was just a fantastic drinkable cascale and, and the cool thing about this bar is they had a couple of these old english style taps where they're not like a keg that's down and pressurized to do it's literally a, a a barrel in the basement where you push the tap and it kind of comes out through one of those round spigots and just drops in your glass, you know, very low um, foam and CO2 production, but uh, very drinkable and just, just very good. Uh, excellent beer. It was, um, it's about 9% alcohol and it was actually decently priced at this bar. So, so I, I really loved it, but um, that's what I had. Great. Oh yeah. It was, it was fantastic. For a second there, it sounded like you were explaining a Hershey bar on fire while you were drinking bourbon. <laughs> Cause you're like, it's kind of smoky Hershey. Bar. And I'm like, Oh, I'm like, this sounds like a flaming Hershey bar, but <laughs> after a night of drinking bourbon. Yeah, no, so. that could have been good too. But no, it was very good. And then the other one I tried was a hyper local made right across again, like like three blocks down on the other side of the of the other side of the river into Brooklyn um, was this little brewery that made this um, other half uh, by Green City uh, upstate. And it was it was really good. Just an IPA, but again, just fantastic beer. So those are the two that I wanted to write home about. Now I was texting you guys and putting them up on the Facebook group, uh, Craft Brews and Geek News all weekend because I was trying a plethora of different hop beers. I tried one called Resin. It was 9% alcohol and it basically had like so much crazy flavors of like all sorts of like citrus and hop and it was just nuts. And it was a collaboration between Six Point and another brewery, which I forget. And then there was one that was called um like Hop Smash or Hop Keeper. And it was again, local to New York City and about seven and a half percent alcohol. That one I, w- I didn't really write home about, but it was, it was pretty standard for an IPA, uh, but it was really good. So those are the four beers that I tried in New York City. The one I wanted to talk about, and I posted this on the Facebook group again, Florida, you know, um, uh, Craft Brews and Geek News, um, is the 75-minute IPA. Ryan, yes. wow. Have you guys tried this yet? No. No. Okay. Well, first, why? And again, it can't really do it much justice because um, the, uh, you know, the video doesn't come to the podcast, but this label is crazy and the artwork is in standard dogfish style, uh, you know, just fit fascination. Uh, but it is a dogfish uh, head 75 minute IPA. And apparently what they do here is they take the 60 and the 90 and they mix it together, which sounds incredible to my favorite beers. Then they also add maple syrup, which... Mm. which I thought was weird and I didn't even notice it until I looked at the bottle. <laughs> I was drinking it and I was like, this is not this is not a 60 minute and it's not a 90 minute, but it's not even like a combination of the two. I was like, what What the hell is a differentiator here? Like, why is this taste so crazy? Um, maple syrup. They actually add maple syrup to it, which which gives the gives. If, imagine Ryan or, or Lost Man, the 60 or the 90 with mm. this like velvety mm. sweetness, but it's not... 
it's not, it's not a, syrupy. It's not syrupy, and it's not a, a typical sweetness that you would have imagined. So it's just got that that uh, flavor profile of it's, syrup, but not yeah, actually consistency. Yeah. Okay, almost a hint, like almost like a like remember like honey frosted oaks or something. Whatever the hell, I haven't eaten cereal in like a year, but there's like a cereal that has like honeycombs that are like syrup flavor. Caveman. <laughs> <laughs> I eat eggs and bacon, eggs, bacon, yeah. and toast every day. You gotta get rid of the bacon and the eggs and bagels. <laughs> Toast? Just toast? Uh, yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> Get rid of the toast, you meant. Get rid of the yeah. butter while you're at it. There you go. Straight dry bread. <laughs> all I'm all. saying, all I'm saying is that imagine the sixty awesome. or, or the ninety, yeah, with this little like flavor profile of syrup. And I hate syrup. I don't. I'm not, I don't not hate syrup, but I don't like syrup. I don't like you know. I don't prefer pancakes when I go out for breakfast. But man, um, it's not something I can drink every day. I'll give you that. I, I could drink the sixty minute. All day, every day, probably. Be very drunk by the end of it, but it, it it's different. And I could drink syrup every day, but you don't see me bragging about it. I mean, I'm, I can't drink syrup every day. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm joking. I don't want to do that. <laughs> it, it does have a fuller mouthfeel, and it's sweeter, and it's not as brash. So, my, okay, so my, my parting words with this thing is that if you meet somebody and you're drinking a dogfish head 60 or 90 or whatever, something really hoppy, and they're like, oh, I don't I don't like those you know hoppy IPAs. This is a 7.5% that, that doesn't have that malty taste, that malty feel like a Bach or something, but it has a subtle sweetness that that just curbs that that uh, bitterness uh, and, and again leaves you that per- almost perfect mouthfeel. Uh, and just a fantastic hint of syrup on on the finish. So um, I really liked it. I, I really thought it was good. But if you guys see it out and about, make sure you pick it up. So should we, if we can't find it, should we buy a bottle of 60 and a bottle of 90, combine it, and then drop a little bit of syrup in there? No, I don't okay. think that would be good. I might try it just to see if you know what the comparison is. I, then you need to have a bottle of this because I don't. I don't know if <laughs> no, that's good. Uh, do I, I'm going to buy all three and then I'm going to do the concoction and then I'm going to try it and see if it works. Just the there, yeah. There is a there's another group that I'm in that, that all they do is mix beers and I'm like I don't I don't know why you guys do that. It's crazy it's, sounding, but it's good. And that's sometimes my, part about my local brewery. I get it. Sometimes it can be great. I just think that most of the time you're going to ruin two good beers. Probably, yeah. Probably. Yeah, but you could come out with a winner in the end. I mean, you never well, know. black and tans. Okay. Yeah, but have you ever sat and said that black and tan is your favorite beer or concoction of beer ever? No, have you ever said that? You only get it at like fun. an Irish pub on like, you know, St. Patty's Day. That's the only time I ever get a black tan. Okay, well, yeah. there's an IPP here in Swan Brewing in Lakeland. That's yeah. You uh, keep you keep talking about that. Get a growler and let's let's taste it, my man. What is it? I don't. It's it's their um their sour mixed with their IPA. And it sounds that sounds like garbage. Yes, I'm aware. Awesome. Well, it it comes out actually really, really good and refreshing. It's got all the benefits I think that anyone comes away with a uh, from a sour with, and then it also has like the the bitterness and whatnot from an IPA. So I don't know. It came out really, really good. I don't know if it would work in a growler, but who knows? They always just do it right there in front of me. So I'm like, meet, meet. No, and, and to your point, I've had some that are, are really good. Um, it's like Frambois and something else comes out really good. And there's, I've had a couple, I mean, a dark and tan or a dark and stormy or whatever. There, there are a couple different combinations that are pretty good. Um, so I'll give you that. But like, no, this, this was just something I totally, I wanted to try it because I saw it and I saw it in the news and then I saw it in the store. So I bought it immediately. But, um, you know, I'd buy it again for sure. But it's, it's definitely not replacing anything on my top five, you know, so. Well, yeah, and you know, to your point, when I went up to Albany, I I was impressed with all the New York City beers. I was not impressed with any Albany beers. <laughs> I was like, no, <laughs> okay, well, this is neat. But um, some of the beers out of Brooklyn and whatnot, they were actually really, really good. So that's it for New York. Well, and, and yeah, and Brooklyn Brewing Company is where my Sriracha Ace comes from, which is which is you know I highly regard. So. Yeah, I got to get over that way. <laughs> all right. So, okay. Well, I think that about wraps it up for our beer stories, unless you guys have anything else at all. Narp. All right, guy? Narp. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. How about this? <laughs> let me go to, let me walk down. Let me dance this dance. And if you hate it, we will, we will just kick back to the Kenobi story. That dance I got it on, on in, brother. Dance okay. it on in. All right. So. <laughs> no one on ever the said that before, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> dance it on in, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I say that. I say that at every family reunion. Dance it on in, brother. Just dance it on in. <laughs> Just try to make feel like I need. That's I want to start saying that now. Yeah, yeah that's, I really that's a thing. Do. That's a thing. When someone goes for a handshake, just be like, dance it on in. Dance it on in. <laughs> yes, yeah. I made it. Dance thing. it on in, brother. <laughs> I made a thing. Yeah, like that's, no, that's remember this. Yeah. We used to do hashtags on every episode. This is the hashtag of this episode. Yes. Someone to help me remind remind myself. Dance to... it on in, brother. And hey, you got to say it like Hulk Hogan. <laughs> dance it on in, brother. 
<laughs> okay, quickly, hold on. One more thing. Okay, uh, do you know that he's do you know that he's getting his own um, movie like Bohemian sure. Rhapsody style, and Chris Pratt is playing him. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes, yes. You heard that? Yeah, I, I saw that, that. Unfortunately, I'm that thinking. is whew, that is, is it. Hard. Chris Pratt or no? It's not Chris Pratt. Okay, it's who's the it? guy that played? Um, uh, oh God, it should be it should be Dave was Batista. A guy. It was, no, it's the guy that played not. Oh, what's oh Thor Helmsworth. Thor, yes, Hel- Helmsworth. Thor Helmsworth. Jesus. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, oh, that's even that's God. even worse. Jesus Christ! I hope he has no. to shave his head. I hope he has to shave his head. And it'll be hilarious. No, he's and I hope he, that you can't. Sh- no, he never. He had long hair. Remember, but it will go bald after a while. It go, but he had long hair from here around. So I just hope that yeah. eventually Helmsworth has to shave his beautiful hair and <laughs> just have this weird dome thing that that Hulk the Hulkster did because. That would be hilarious looking. I don't know how they're going to make that. Just like, just get McNulty or somebody like old. I don't know. Just, just I don't know. Um, I hope none of that happens. Okay. I mean, <laughs> Go ahead, Ryan. I was going to say, if he can play Thor, he can play Hulk Hogan. I don't see the correlation. What, what, yeah, what, how is someone, that? What does anybody have it against court, uh, against Hulk Hogan? I mean, honestly, like he might have messed up in some recent years, but he's the I Hulk. Think he was, I think he was set up. I think Bubba Love should set him up for sure. That they did. That yeah. they did. They they, uh, they there was a whole thing with that. It, yeah. you know, yeah. paid a lawyer to get drunk and pick up yeah, a that was, or something. Yeah, absolutely. It oh, was his wife, but that was uh, yeah, that was uh, okay. Anyways, speaking of the Hulkster and wrestling and competitions, Ryan, I have a I have a new segment that me and Mr. Lossman were hatching, scheming up, if you will. And I think there's some value here. And what I want to do is offer to the listeners there, if anybody follows us on Patreon, which Patreon, excuse me, if anybody follows us on Patreon, which if you do, you're a saint. Um, and we haven't, I have not been keeping up with that as well as I should. But what I'm going to start doing is to post unique content to Patreon and to YouTube. So that there's a little bit of extra stuff if you go in and hang out with us. We'll also put it in the, um, well, I'll put probably periodically episodes in the Facebook group, Craft Brews and Geek News. But what I wanted to, what I wanted to introduce to you, Ryan, is a new concept. And me and Lausman dubbed it Ver- Versus. versus and the verses which if you haven't played 1995's mario 64 super mario kart excuse me mario kart 64 you'd be familiar with the verses that mario says and the way he says it what i want to do on an occasional segment is do a versus so take a thing like uh 1942 you know battleship that you know, fought in the war versus a death star or a verse excuse me versus a um a, a star Destroyer. Destroyer. Yeah. Or like an X-Wing versus like a bomber. Or, and these are all Star Wars things, of course, but they don't have to be necessarily. It could be like two things, two two things just fighting. And so... the. Like, like, I don't know. Krillin versus the uh, the bald guy who's also in Doctor Strange. Yes. You know, remember him? Cool. Chen? Be, I think his name a, is Chen. That's a great really? fight. Yeah. Well, the yeah. first one, the first one that they I want to pitch to you... They both discs. That's awesome. That's the first one, Ryan, Ryan, the first one I wanted to pitch to you was... Goku versus Darth Vader, and I just wanted to put push push that one out there to see <laughs> to see what you yeah to see what you would think about it. I know that you think it would be an Goku easy fight. Would destroy Darth Vader. Okay, okay. So if you want to say Goku versus Yoda, I don't know Goku as well as you do. So I wanted to just pitch it to you and and see what you thought about the new the, the new segment versus. And if you think that we could start it off with some sort of Dragon Ball Star Wars combination, that's all I was trying to offer you as this is this this peace sprig, if yeah. you will, that the uh, the gentle dove is bringing to our two fandoms i'm down all right so who do you think would be able to stand up against goku i'll defend them from the star wars universe you defend goku laos can moderate and chip in okay okay <laughs> okay I, I think i think i'm i think i'm getting the gist of this so how do we start well who first would be the best suited to fight goku none okay <laughs> not well playing then the take take a goku that is well, not uh, as powered up as you super saiyan okay Take so a regular we, Goku or like a young Goku, like a '90s cartoon Goku or something like that. So you're really digging low. You so have to define. Here's the, here's the premise of the game. You have to define the character, okay. and then we'll define where they're fighting, and then we'll you know define both characters, define the the arena, if you will, and then okay. we'll we'll just talk it out, and we'll see who who do we honestly think subjectively will win. <laughs> we will take young Son Goku before he trains with King Kai because he had a power level of, I don't know, 500 to a thousand, something in that ballpark. So okay, and who will you give me for that? I'll take Grievous. I don't care. Like who is the, who is, the, who's the, who I'm saying, whose power do you think that matches up to? Darth Maul? No, Vader was more powerful than, than Maul. So if you're going Maul, I'm going Vader. 
Well, I mean, oh, oh okay. Are you going mall in? <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately, uh, the, the, the emperor we'll, wasn't. We'll, we'll, we'll go young Vader versus young Goku. Sure. Well, wait, how young? Because he really was at his peak. When he like, first became Vader. I don't know, because no? he hadn't turned full evil. When he's full evil, I feel like Rogue One style. He was he was okay. ready to ready to first introduction was, of, of Vader. Sure, we'll go. Okay, we'll move that one. Not Before, first introduction, not a New Hope. I'm saying like Rogue One. Like no, actually, I would prefer a, just a, like a really awkward introduction. Um, hello, this is me, Darth Vader. <laughs> I, I think you are. Yeah. <laughs> a <Sorry>. super what? <laughs> I mean, I get it. You're saying it. Yeah. <laughs> I what think that's pretty comparable. Color, I mean, I I'm not trying face. to. Well, I'm not trying to like downplay Vader's power when I say this. I just I feel that the way that Goku could power up when he fought uh, Vegeta after training with King Kai was just super over the top, and okay. I don't think Vader could have withstood that. Sorry. Okay, so we've got so we've got a young Goku, and we've got at your peak Vader. Uh, sure. Okay, we've agreed on those terms. So where would they fight? Because Vader is not known for his long jumps or Kamehameha screams flying through the air. Death Star. So, so you you would take the Death Star? I take the Death Star because um, Goku could not fly at that point in time. Okay. So that gives Vader the full advantage in the sense that he knows the layout of the ship, and if he could potentially not Goku down into the center of the ship as we saw a few people do uh then yeah that. There, there's maybe like a offsetting advantage for either either person at this point yeah okay yeah i was about to say, right. don't tell princess leia you can't fly in space <laughs> <laughs> or shit she, still happened she, she, she <laughs> should they strong. remake episode eight? <laughs> well she's no. don't, don't at, we're not on that discussion right now that's a different versus that we'll go through <laughs> yeah sounds like we should all right, we'll so we'll crunch type... through it soon, I'm sure. So, so Ryan, again, just because I, I, we all know who Vader is, I probably have a little bit more knowledge as to his style. But what would you? So, how would Goku start this battle? Okay, they're dropped into a hangar on the Death Star. There's enough space. It's about the size of a football field square. Okay, football yeah. field long, football field tall, football field wide. However you want to say it, it's about the size of a football field. How how would Goku use that space? Perfectly. He's a fan of tournaments. So when you say tournaments, is he like, I'm going to run and jump and kick? Or is it like a, a, a laser battle he's, from the hands? He's going to stay within his boundaries and uh, utilize his, his surroundings to, uh, to conquer and defeat and find his opponent's weakness. I'll so, allow it. I'm the okay. moderator, right? Yes, you are the you are the moderator. <laughs> okay, you're the, you're the only person it. that can moderate this fight, last man. Okay, okay, this All is right. fun. So, does does Goku have any presence or powers uh, like the Force? He can use his key to uh, reject energy blasts coming from Vader. Maybe potentially also, but uh, reject the Force and well, maybe potentially depending on his power limits because he, he does have limits with his lower younger self to defend against the lightsaber which would be also the only weapon besides right. the force that, that vader has but see I, I would give you that he can defend the lightsaber and loss you, you chime in if you need a, a, a take a, a you know a, a, a breather on any of this stuff I, I would give you the lightsaber deflection but i do not i can't take a maybe possibly that he could deflect any of the force stuff because vader doesn't shoot lightning he doesn't shoot lasers he, he simply can manipulate the force as in like if he held up his hand he could choke goku what would jo what would goku do against the force choke he would <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> swallow his tongue is that what you're saying yeah uh, in in this stage he would probably fear earth's protection and go ape if he could. Oh, Which, so he can still turn into no, a monkey at this point. He can't turn into a monkey because his tail's been removed. I just think that he would like something would snap inside of him to make him become reckless. And that's always Goku's last line of defense. When Goku gets trapped into a corner. We just he, started this fight. You're saying, wait, if I started the if Vader started to choke him, he'd just turn into a monkey? <laughs> well, no. No, no, he can't turn into a monkey at this point. But he might he might shoot an energy blast out of his out of his Okay. Hand. Okay. Yeah. So he would just start to like get just, get <laughs> Like basically, yeah, implode kind of. Not really yeah. implode, but okay. All right. So so they've learned that the force probably choke isn't gonna work. And what would happen next? Like what if if he started if he was that, you know, overpowered at least by the force and he blasted off, Vader would break the force choke and probably try to deflect 
the it laser become a, blast. It become a physical fight. It become a uh, who's so, better at physically fighting. So you think Goku would run in? Sure. Okay, I see. I see Vader doing a defensive stance, right, and, and deflecting with the blade. Um, if he, if Goku like tried to, to karate chop him or something, um, and he Go deflected. Neck. Him. Wait, hold yeah. on, hold on, hold on. I just need to make sure I'm understanding. This. Vader <laughs> karate chopping people like no, Chuck Norris. No. I meant. I meant. Is he wearing the jeans too? <laughs> <laughs> I would actually I pay meant, money to see this fight. I meant if Goku went into karate chop him and he tried to deflect it with a, with the um, the lightsaber. How would how would go exactly like in a cartoon scenario in this in this time frame? How would he deflect a lightsaber though? That's what I can't get through my Goku? head. Goku? Yeah. Well, um, we or would he just Goku. like jump and flip around? He he would give quick again, jabs. Well, if energy is coming at him, he could use his energy to deflect it. So that's like a like he could go like like a chop and like kind of block the. He would figure the something out as he's fighting because he always does. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot right. of ad libbing to your theory here. Again, I'm I'm really downplaying Goku's ability, so I I, know, yeah, I appreciate child. the handicap. No, I appreciate the handicap. There's definitely I'm, a handicap here. This I is this to... two different worlds. Like if you just said, okay, Goku versus Superman, and we were talking about young Goku versus Superman, this is a totally different story. Goku with okay. advance. But if we're talking Super Saiyan Goku, well then that's a story. So Okay. It'd well let's like, finish oh, this Peter. one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if he's okay, so he's fighting and he's deflecting and so are they at a stalemate right now because i feel somebody's got to have the weakness that that either either guy can exploit and obviously if if goku got a, a touch in on any of his equipment right on his thing or grabbed his arm and, and is he super strong like he could just crush like his see his this is arm? This, this is the genius of goku and and i you know i feel like i know the character is that he would ultimately define vader's weakness as believing in the dark side of the force and saying what are you do? talk him out of it yes that no. is what goku does no no that is exactly what goku tries to do in the middle of his fights he will say you're really not that bad of a guy but I, and then he gets involved because he's like yeah i'm up for the challenge if you really want to go that's fine but i understand that your weakness is conflict I yeah, was actually going to suggest something like that. I was going to say he he might just actually get Anakin or Darth Vader so <laughs> mad that well so no, mad that he does it, that whole no I think like I think crush the whole stuff. But if we're talking about okay, so we're talking about the Vader, and again, Ryan, this is this is playing up to the handicap piece. If we're talking about, the, I see your point. If we're talking about the Vader that is in Rogue One, Rogue One, uh, I, I do not now. I don't remember the timeline because it backs right into. Episode four, which is technically like 30 years after, I guess. No, it's not that many. Hold on. How many years after? It was 30 years. Like five. Yeah, I think it's I think it's like well said, like five. Oh nope, 19. 19 years. Ah, huh? so 19 years. Okay, so my point I've been wrong on that number before. Dude, so have I, obviously. <laughs> I'm not a pro. <laughs> there are far more Star Wars centric podcasts that you can listen to that will nail that on the head. But for the record, uh, Rogue One takes place. So my Vader takes place 19 years after he was turned into Vader. Where I was going with this is that to Ryan's point, if Goku was going to try to convince him of something like, hey, you're not really evil, you're just mad at at you know the fact that you can't change the past and that your wife Padme, who you love, got taken from you and you were lied to, and now you're a robot man, basically. Vader might be like, so those Dragon Balls, they can make grant a wish, right? Like, he might play into that. Is that how it works, Ryan, with, with the Dragon Balls? Because I thought you had, like, three Dragon Balls, you get one wish, you get seven, you get three wishes and a dog. I don't know. You get, how does that uh, work? You get one wish with the Earth Dragon Balls, and you get three with the Namekian. Correct. So so do you think that Goku would play off his, his love for Padme, even being 20 years after, to say, I know you, man, and all you want to do is get Padme back? And he'd be like, Dragon Balls? Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, at that point, though, it'd be too far gone for Padme to be wished back because uh, there's only a certain time frame where the dragon can actually really feel the spirit. To, so to to, to, to to wish her back. OK, which so, is so, exactly so. why, because the whole the whole flaw in the whole system is, well, how come we don't use the Dragon Balls to wish all the Saiyans back? Well, can't do it because it was so far removed. What is the time frame? I, that's a great question. I would have to research that. OK, so, what so are you saying? there is a time frame, though. Nobody on that. <laughs> so what are you saying? Stop so, saying that. It's, it's so, 21. But, but, Stop saying but, that. Come on. Go, it. Goku would either attack his weakness, which is the fact that he's only on the dark side because of his, you know, being upset of losing Padme and also being, you know, what? He's only got one arm and 
all the rest is all mechanical. Uh, it is norms, I think. They're like half little steel. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so he would just play on that a- in the sense that he would say, okay, if you want to continue this fight, this is purely on your own ego at that point, which is what Goku does for every fighter he's ever fought. And then he always plays into it, and sometimes it stabs him in the back, and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it works out, like when he fought Vegeta. He, now Vegeta is part of the whole saga, and if it wasn't for Vegeta, um, there'd be a lot of stuff that that the story wouldn't have. So, okay. so this is this is the example you're asking for, and this is why I'm saying like even fighting an evil person such as Darth Vader, he would say... So wait, he's so really, smooth? Goku's so smooth that he could talk Darth Vader into believing him? I believe so. And then I believe... I believe the equivalent... Okay, I believe Goku is the equivalent mentality of Luke Skywalker. Okay, so do you So you think it's, it's outrageous that Goku would try to convince Darth Vader knowing that he could not do it, but it would end the fight? Say this again? So do you think it's crazy that Goku would try to convince Darth Vader that he could, in fact, bring back Padme if Darth Vader helped him find all the Dragon Balls? A skill, a skill that Darth Vader is very good at, finding things and people and balls. (laughs) The Death Star. Sorry, not balls, balls, but the Death Star. (laughs) I'm sorry, I'm laughing at that last comment there. I don't, whatever, man. I, 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 uh, maybe. I mean, obviously, Darth Vader's good at, he, he appreciates a big ball. Is <laughs> that how big are the Dragon Balls? I don't know. Oh, is that a ball. hidden Dragon Ball? They're not that. Ooh. I don't know. Get they, that. They, 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 they fit your hand. They fit your hand. But yeah, if he could, if 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 you could bring Padme back, Goku, Goku, with Goku would moon. say something to the effect of, "I can see deep down inside you're filled with conflict and balls, and you're really <laughs> sorry no, deep down inside he is. Don't say Padme anymore. It's Padme." Oh, <laughs> yeah. If you add an extra teal day, I think they're going to charge George <laughs> Lucas a nickel. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know that the police were out correcting people. I just don't want to get emails or tweets about it. <laughs> they're the stormtroopers. Oh. They're very different kind of police. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> From well, there's a very a galactic, different time period. There's a galactic police in the uh, Dragon Ball universe. But yeah, I think. Now, that would have been a good comparison, by the way. The galactic police from that and the stormtroopers. No, so Jocko, Jocko's a pussy. He, he, it's like, yeah. Okay, well, there's no need for name calling, but yeah. but the stormtroopers <laughs> also can't shoot for shit, so maybe that's a future episode. <laughs> Jocko, uh, when when other people are leading the way, Jocko finds his way in. But yeah, sure. Uh, no, I think he could convince uh, Vader that there's a way to at least exper- experience Padme one more time. Which would soften his heart and join Goku. All right. Okay. He would he would convince Vader that he's being controlled because he would okay. figure it out. Is what I'm trying to say. Like there's there's no that is Goku's nature is to figure out what controls the evil within a creature that he fights or a person that he fights. The only okay. exception would have been say Majin Buu, but Majin Buu was pure evil. So. And that's why and that's why yeah Majin I remember Majin Buu. I'm, um, and that's why Piccolo started. I was a bad guy, but then became a good guy, right? He spat, I love Piccolo. Piccolo was like my favorite character. He spat Kami out, yeah, from Michelle. Oh, and then geez. the 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 more Goku battles, all you'll notice all of Goku's friends are once his enemies. Well, no, what they say about your enemies. Um, They're a bunch of dicks. <laughs> So I That's what I say about my enemies. Keep your friends closer. Keep your enemies closer. No, keep, nah, your, friends man. Close, Go keep, with your, keep your friends yeah. close and your enemies closer. Sometimes, you you're in it. Sometimes your biggest nope. enemy is your best friend. Okay. Nope. Because I say all my you, enemies you know, I'm friends with them. You know them <laughs> out. in and out. Like you, you know them in and out. You know how to defend yourself against them. So. I think you guys forgot the first part of my argument. They're my enemies. F those guys. <laughs> they out. <laughs> they like, I'm out. just not going to spend the time. Well, ultimately, <laughs> I just used Goku's own mindset to deflate this entire conversation. No, 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 you didn't. I, I think I think that I think that there's this there's is certain, fun though. I like this. Well, okay, so this and this is just an example. I, but I'm speaking for an inanimate character, by the way. I'm just saying that, you uh, are. What, is mine more animate than yours? <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> it's like, he no, was a was, real person. He was a he, real man. actor. Yeah, it was live, live action. action. It was yeah. way better than Dragon Ball Evolution. I'll tell you that. Oh, well, there, there you go. He was a real actor. Now, and we now, don't talk now, about wait, it. Wait, no, this is the loophole. If we're using the Goku from Dragon Ball Evolution, ah, oh, fuck, Goku's dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I asked you for an evenly matched, not an overly matched. So maybe that's 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 a flaw for this first run at it. But what I'm saying to you is that this is the premise of the game. And to wrap this up, just to wrap the game up, let's recap what happened. So 
They're at the Death Star. Goku is there for some reason, looking for Dragon Balls. Confused. It's not a Dragon Ball. It's a moon. What'd you say, Lost? <laughs> so that's no <laughs> moon. It's a Dragon Ball. <laughs> Opposite. Okay, got it. Got it. That's I think that was good. Moon. It's a Dragon Ball. That was clever. So, so I think that's good. Okay. They start to scrap. Realize they can't really defeat each other. Got a little bit of a standoff. Then Goku starts to do his I'm going to tug on your heartstrings thing. Um, Goku's uh, a psychiatrist at that point. Okay. Okay. Wait, uh, he can um, actually administer medication? <laughs> that's what no. a psychiatrist. So are, are you referring to a psychologist? Because <laughs> those just kind of take a, you know, they kind of take a look at feelings. Goku's a counselor. He's just gui- guiding them in the right path. Okay. He's not so, slipping anyone hydrocodeine, right? No. <laughs> okay. Just wanted to make Pills sure. are <laughs> killing America. <laughs> this is the best story ever. <laughs> know, okay, we'll keep painting the picture just to wrap it up. We, we, we need to get through it. So, all right. So Goku lands, looking for Dragon Balls, can't find him, finds Darth Vader. He says, get the hell off my ship space station thing yeah they start a fight they they realize they're at a stalemate he, he hits him with the force he gets out lightsaber comes up goku does his thing and he says what ryan kind of back off we're looking you're, you're, not, you're okay I, I can feel the evil inside you tearing you apart i can feel your dragon balls and wow. he says, wait a second. You thought there was a Dragon Ball here? What is you dragon were the Ball chosen do? one. Right, well, he's already gotten that before from the Vader's standpoint. <laughs> he's just bringing it back out. <laughs> so so he realizes that, wait a second, through Goku's teaching here, if he can find Dragon Balls, then, then Goku says, well, there's a way that I don't necessarily, he doesn't promise that he can bring back Padme. He just says that he can he can, he can can ha- have Vader experience her once again. What does that mean from a Super Saiyan standpoint? I mean, that's up to the dragon, however that happens. So you would convince? So wait, wait. So Vader and Goku find a Dragon Ball. <laughs> the, 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 wait, yeah, wait a second. How did it go then? Because you the, said, see, the, you did lie to him. You did the, lie to Vader. The, You're just as bad as the Emperor. The magic dragon. This know. deal keeps changing all the time. <laughs> so why didn't you just lead your argument with at the very, very beginning? You could have just said, "Well, it depends on the dragon and what he's feeling." <laughs> this could have I all didn't been. Think about it when he said it. Pray the deal I, doesn't get changed again, or what, what is it? <laughs> this deal's getting worse all the time. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, okay. So, Goku well, convinces... Oh, but... Okay. So, maybe Goku doesn't convince him about Padme, but maybe he convinces <sighs> Vader again. hole again. Or Padme, sorry. There you go. <laughs> but maybe Let's he talk about Padme's his... hole again, yeah? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <Natalie> Portman. <laughs> what? what? Oh, boy. Jesus... He's everybody's, in this everybody's, fight? everybody's gonna be like listening to this podcast and then incognitoing Pad Padme naked. Padme's Dragon Balls. What are <laughs> to all of our fans out there, yeah, don't waste but, your time. But I maybe what we're googling, okay. but not safe for work. <laughs> yeah, mm. don't do it on it's your way. Safe. Browser. There's nothing there. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't have a butthole. I mean, no, not Dude, Padme not doesn't be... have a butthole. That's it. That's the new. <laughs> that's the new one. Do not be connected to Wi-Fi at work when you're listening <laughs> to this podcast. All right, all right, stop. stop. So Come maybe on. Okay, Ryan, he convinces, where are you going? But maybe he convinces Vader that hey, I can't let you, or you know, you won't be able to see Padme, but you can wish yourself whole again because the dragon could give Vader his arms and his legs back, yeah, and then he... that would that would relieve him of having to believe into the dark force to actually keep him alive, which would actually in turn make him good again. Not necessarily, because he, he would still have his existence. But he of doesn't being give a bad person. He doesn't give it. Yeah. By the end of this, the franchise, he didn't give a shit if he was full robot or whatever. He was just full of hatred. Right, but his hatred was because he did what he did. No, his hatred yeah, he was for how he got there. He doesn't right. care about himself at all. I mean, no, he doesn't I don't care think, about himself. You don't think that there's any regret in him whatsoever? No, if they took his little stupid computer and plugged it into a toaster, he'd still be angry. Hey, <laughs> I you wouldn't care. care. I want to point. I want to. You could be whole again, out. and I'll give you a Saiyan jumpsuit, like or moderator. Uh, I, moderator. I want to point one thing out real quickly that some Do other it. podcast that I'm a huge fan of pointed out. Um, I want to remind everyone that at one point at Jabba's palace, there was a robot who was 100% robot and was turned as a torture device upside down and his feet were burned yeah. and he, he screamed <laughs> bloody murder yeah I, I, I do remember that but they didn't have dragon balls but why would a robot scream bloody murder that doesn't make it like maybe it, all he had was dragon balls and that's why he could feel that like box that died. trash can robot yeah. robo trash he all he had was dragon all right. balls. but then why would c3po experience fear 
Because he's an idiot. <laughs> yeah, that's no, that is learned. That's learned behavior. That's, that's the key. That's the character. Well, yeah, but robots can experience fear because if they die, just like anybody else dies. That's why if you watch Solo and those other robots, why would robots need to be liberated? <laughs> like, like that was the whole premise of the Solo, like uh, L three, which is robot why they were thing. flipped upside down and they 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 put them <laughs> right. fire to experience. Um, they can how feel about the heat. Robots, why not? listen, last man, robots versus fire. We'll do that one later. Okay. Ryan, let's That's finish one. this one. <laughs> okay. This one's this one's a long one, Donnie, because I'm I'm pulling from my man. Okay, okay. Well, let's wrap it up. All I'm saying is, what's happening now? Goku's trying to convince Vader that we can get Dragon Balls, and that he might be able to experience Padme again. How does he do this, or where do they go from here? I'm happy to take it, but you sounded like you were going somewhere. They he starts to convince him that if listen, if we get a Dragon Ball, I go my way. You can experience Padme again. He says, "All right, fine." So to your point, Ryan, what you said is that if they find a Dragon Ball, then they on Earth it has to be on Earth or one of the other ones. But if they find one on Earth, they can go to the dragon, and the dragon will say a, a plethora of things, which could be, "Hey, I can't bring her back, but I can exp- you can experience her again." That's one thing. Number right. number two, he could make you whole again, which means he give you arms and your legs back. For well, he could if if Vader wished it. Yeah. He- he could wish for his arms and his legs back. Not to say that, that would make him a good person again, but for suffering all the years he did, he could become a whole person and then decide if he wanted to. He wouldn't need to. He wouldn't need to believe in the dark side to keep himself alive. He could choose to be so, good again. It'd be so a choice. It would believe, give him the choice. Okay, I believe, and I believe the export of the original franchise of Star Wars is that he would say. You know, if nothing else happened, he would say, yes, obviously, there's still good in me. I want to see the light again. And I think that's how this epic battle would end. Absolutely. And then He's- Goku would want to keep fighting with him and train with him because that's just Goku's nature. <laughs> is there a scenario where when this giant dragon like is awoken that he goes, oh, shit. Uh, sorry, man. I didn't see you, Colin. I've been asleep for thousands of years. And it's just like, oh, hey, guys. He oh, actually, hey guys. The, the dragon freaks out when he sees, uh, it fast forward to Super, whenever he sees Beerus the Destroyer, he's like, is that Beerus? <laughs> It's kind of funny. <laughs> the dragon does because he's afraid of one, like the, a guy. The, the dragon freaks out when he sees Beerus the Destroyer, and he's like, "It is," and it's like, oh, "How's it going?" <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> okay, so All Beerus right. the Destroyer would make the dragon freak out. Okay, <laughs> well, we can say but that's Beerus. Way, Beerus the Destroyer would have just hawkeyed Vader out of existence the moment he saw them as a threat. All so. right. Well, so I don't huck out myself. Let's just get out of here. So hey, you're the one that it. brought up Dragon. Hey, Ball. hey, no, I'm, I'm good. Saying, I'm, I'm, no holds bar. Just okay, saying. that's good. Well, that's exactly what this was. This was a no holds bar sample of what we are going to bring to the table with our new segment called Versus. And I will have an animation kind of sound for this by the time you hear it. It will sound awesome. It'll be great. I really enjoyed that. Ryan, did you have fun with Versus? I did, but I don't want all of the Star Wars fans coming after me for that's okay that's okay this. star wars is on me if anyone wants to come after somebody come after me it is not anything that ryan did and it will not always be star wars nor will it always be dragon ball mr lossman i have a question yeah. um as the moderator i feel like it should have been left up to me to be swayed either which way that's true okay so Where the are vote, you swayed? That's no, a great, yeah great that's question. right so the vote is is that is that a convincing description of how it might have went down from the stories and, and recanting that you heard I will say yes, because I feel like there was just so much conflict in Darth Vader that that's a plausible scenario. Mm. All right. Then it's been settled. Oh, yeah. I should have been a lawyer. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Dragon Law, actually. It's called Dragon Law. You're Dragon right. Law Z. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. That First would try. Be, if I ever become a lawyer, I'm going to make that the name of my office. Dragon <laughs> Law Z. I would have <laughs> so many people of the night. <laughs> at this. I would have so many people at my door. I don't think many. Yeah, you, you'd have a bunch of Japanese people. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, cut that out. No. Oh, All right. what? Uh, well, it's bigger over there and you know it. Here Dragon, we go, guys. Dragon Law. So, so eventually, awesome. eventually what happens, eventually what happens is Vader and Goku form a law firm and they call themselves Dragon Law Z. And they go down in history as the two greatest law firm uh, folks of all time because they yes. have superpowers and they can solve your problems. <laughs> Moderator, is that a goddamn rat? And and and, and <laughs> Goku goes, or no, 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 excuse me. And Vader tells everyone, look, I've been on the dark side, but it's okay. You got it. <laughs> 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 
Jones. That was that was not a good way to end it. No, I was gonna say uh, something like 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 this. Luke, I am your lawyer. <laughs> That's all oh, I would have said. I wasn't thinking we were on the last segment of it. I was still playing with the lawyer aspect. Oh, we're on the last I've, segment. You know, like I've been all the right. prosecutor. Now I'm the defense attorney. Like kind of thing. Uh, but okay. no, that that nailed it. Let's finish. You know, let's just go back like three seconds. Mr. Moderator, have we convinced you? Yes, I'm convinced. Okay. All right. And as as okay, and good. So that's great. And and to close it out, Dragon Law Z is a thing, and Goku and Darth Vader are friends. No one died. Plus one uh pl- plus n- nothing. I don't know. Nothing, nobody died. I don't that's one great. Botham spy died. Okay, one bathroom spa, that's fine. I just ah. it'll be interesting to keep track one of one bathroom how... spa died. Is that what you said? Well that's well exactly it, what I said. In all of these battles, people won't die, right? Not always. So the first one is a stalemate, and they just came out to be t- together. I think that's fun. So so let's wrap it up. I think that's it. A- anything else, boys? People will die in the future ones, but yes. For right now, no <laughs> yes, <one's they> will. <laughs> People will die. Buildings will crumble. Whole economies yep. and countries will fail. I'm sure it's going to get very intense, but I really like it. So Gotta do a Mario versus Luigi. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. figure that out. Yeah. We'll, we'll take suggestions, though. Please go on the Facebook group. If you're listening to this right now, go on the Facebook group and, and name your craziest pair up that you would ever want to see. I'm not saying Mario versus Luigi. I'm saying weird stuff like the Cars car, Lightning McQueen versus one of the transformers i don't know something crazy like that kirby even, versus clefairy there you go that that is crazy or people versus pokemon are they good to eat i don't know let's think <laughs> or about sam's it. club versus costco that's way too similar but anyways things like nope. that we'll you just cover. offended <laughs> you just offended every member of pedamon just so you're clear <laughs> okay. i don't know what pedamon is <laughs> i'll I feel take like it not. I, just, <laughs> I feel like it's not a thing as well <laughs> it's not a thing yeah. we'll 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 see, we'll, see, we'll see what happens but boys please mr lossman where can the good kids find you I can be found at Mr. Lost Man on Twitter <laughs> and Broodboy813 dying of laughter. Where can the good people find you on Instagram at Broodboy813 and Twitter, which I haven't been on much uh, as of late? Plus, uh, please feel free to comment and uh, subscribe to our Craft Brews and Geek News uh, Facebook page. Uh, if you're not a member yet, you should be and join in on the conversation with all the fun things that we post daily and weekly. So, so eventually, as we continue to do this versus thing in other segments, we're going to take votes from our Patreon subscribers and our YouTube subscribers. So please do check us out on both those places. Again, you can find us Craft Brews and Geek News on both YouTube and Patreon. Um, But I would just love again to say for the last shameless plug, I think it's been five now of the (laughs) Facebook group. Please do join. It's a lot of fun. You can find me personally at Brewmasters Club on um, Instagram, I believe. Um, Actually, no, it's it's Craft Brews and Geek News on just about everything now. So Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, find me there. We've had a blast. As we say at the end of every Every podcast, Ryan, please. Oh, no. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll do it again. Can I give you a tip? I was going to either do the Luke, I am your lawyer, or, nope. or I was going to do something. Come on. Give me a Kamehameha something. Just make it up. I you was thinking to. about it. Uh, Kamehameha Vader? You can do that. You, it's okay. You can have that was, if you want. Uh, Tell me when you got it. Uh, I even have one. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. No. You got to tell me when you got it. Is, Unless you want last one to take it, he'll take it. Is there a way to tie in lawyer? I feel like I've done the Kamehameha. So how do you I have. tie this? You haven't. Okay, last one, you got one. Kamehameha. Yes. Kameha Vader. What are we free associating right now? This is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> just All tossing right. it out. How about Tossing Donnie? Ba- balls clean, around. <laughs> just, I, I don't have track. one. I had one, but I don't have it. Okay. Clean track. Let me lay one down. Ryan, think about one for a second, and then you can delete mine entirely. However, Donnie. Okay. As we say at the end of every podcast, Mr. Lausman. This episode's been my Kamehameha fave. <laughs> okay. That's it. It's that simple. I, that's fine. That's fine. Ryan, you good? Oh, it's really krilling him. <laughs> Ryan's about to have a Dragon Ball if we don't end this thing. So yeah, he's really in a piccolo. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> oh boy! May the force could, be I, with you all. I could ways. do. I could. I, I could do the. This Too late. Is krilling you me. should have just done the thing that you were talking about. You've been listening to the official podcast of the Brewmasters Club, Craft Brews, and Geek News. Grab a beer with the guys and be sure to subscribe to catch additional content. Add this podcast to your favorite RSS feed or iTunes. Chat with the guys on Twitter at Brewmasters Club and Facebook and online at www.brewmasters.club. Cheers. <laughs>